What about um, uh, Briona? Briona. Um, I think Briona. I think she made a mistake with uh, with regards to time. I think I I mean kind of miscommunicated the time. You know the time zones and everything. So I think she thought it's 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 this time, but it's sixteen o'clock, but American time. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> she's gonna come like that. Yeah, but, but yeah, but I told her that it's South African time. I think let's just start. I'm looking at, at the time. It's, it's not on our side, eh? Yeah, yeah. No, no. It's, it's all right. It's chilled. Um, so, okay. This is the the lockdown chat with us, Nasa and Bui. And um, so we've been doing a couple of talks around many different issues, around technology, around music industry, the arts. And um, we also touched on tourism as well. We had a show on tourism. We were asking people in the industry how they've been affected um, with the lockdown and uh, the, the restrictions that have been put in place. So now moving along, like here in South Africa, we're in the level four of lockdown where certain restrictions have been lifted up. And um, so some, some things are allowed, like going out to exercise in the morning and certain activities they want to get kids back at school but we do know that a lot of people have had some mental issues while being at home um, right now we're going to talk about mental health and mental wellness and then later on at 5 p.m we'll go into physical wellness whereby we're looking at what are the physical activities that people can make you know get themselves back in, in, into, into normal life so from yeah, um, Bui, I don't know if you had any opening um, statements for us today, but I was looking at <laughs> psychology today and certain websites and um, found that a lot of people have had a really tough time being indoors, being at home, and it's, it's, it's been really difficult. And so we wanted to tackle this issue so that we could see and help people on how they could... Um, make their lives better if they're still indoors and if they're out there and they're out you know interacting with other people you still have social distancing but what are the things you could tell yourself meditate on and just keep a sane mind about the changes that are in our society socially and and personally so welcoming Jimena to our conversation Jimena Constantino from Mexico, who I've met, had the privilege of meeting earlier on in 2019, and i um, so happy to have you with us today um, to gain some insight into you as a psychologist and life coach, someone who's always, you know, helping people, um, even if you're not practicing professionally, but we know that you have some great knowledge to share with us that could help us. And you know, just because you're home in Mexico and we're here in South Africa doesn't mean that we can't learn from each other. You know, we're facing the same pandemic. We're in the same situation. And so we can learn from each other and take points that can move us forward. So welcome, Jimena. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, thank you for having me. And as you said, Nos, um, I think it's really important what you just expressed. Um, even if we are very far apart one from another, even if, you know, maybe if we even haven't met at some point, we are all experiencing the same things now. We are all part of this pandemic and we are all trying to figure it out, you know, day by day, because it's something completely new to everyone. Absolutely everyone. I don't think there's even a very old, old person who has experienced this, um, this sort of situation um, as, as a child, you know, it's just, it's impossible to describe what is really happening and what will happen. So um, I, as I said before, um, with with Nas, I was, I was explaining to her a little bit about my situation. Um, I am not, I, I don't really want to get into, you know, the, the clinical part of 
how this is really affecting people because I think <laughs> I have no clients right now and I, I've only read certain things. I only have my experience. I have my friends and my family's experience. Um, but it's, I can only get examples of it, you know? Um, and I think everyone is experiencing some sort of the same thing. So we can all relate to that, okay? Um, what I do have for you today is some, some activities that I've thought about, you know, um, that might help you during the lockdown. As, as you said, Nos, you are in phase four, so that allows you to go outside, you know, and obviously being very careful. Um, but most, most of the part, you are at home, right? Um, well, here in Mexico, we are on stage three, which is the most um, dangerous one. So everyone needs to be at home at this point. Um, and we still don't know when this is going to, to end, right? Just like everyone else. <laughs> so um, I don't know if you've noticed, but in social media, there are a lot of people posting all the activities that they're doing. And they're all great, you know, they're baking, they're cooking, they're exercising, they're meditating, um, I don't, doing yourself projects. There are so many things that people are experiencing right now just because they don't want to get bored and they want to do something during the day. Well, um, all of those are great. I mean, if you can do them, just go ahead, experience whatever you can. Um, give it a try, you know. Um, however, I do have some, um, I, what I think it's a little bit different um, I, sort of activities that you can do at home. And what we're going to, what I'm going to explain right now is how you can get in contact with your inner self and your, um, your environment, okay? The environment that you are that you have to be in right now because you can't change certain things, okay? The most important thing to know, I think, right now is that there are many things that you cannot control. But just think about it. It's not only you who can't go out or who can't visit friends or can't party or can't go to school or work. It's everyone. You are not alone on this. It's everyone that is experiencing something absolutely new and we have to adapt to what we have and what we can do. Knowing that we don't have control over certain things makes it easier in a way because we can let go of certain things and we can just focus on what we can actually do and control. So what can we do? We can, we can know about ourselves. This is a very good time to actually get to know us. Um, one of the activities, oh, before I forget, let me just let you, uh, let me uh, say this. All of these activities don't require any money, okay? You can, you can add money to them if you want to make it, you know, nicer or better or whatever. Um, but they do not require any sort of money. You can get any type of material that, um, that you can find at home or if you do have the possibility of going somewhere or asking someone, for those materials and go ahead, do it. Um, please be safe. I am not saying, please go outside and buy everything you can and mix with everyone you can. I am not saying that. <laughs> okay, so let me get started with these exercises, uh, these activities. Um, one of them is creating a vision board. So I came up with this idea because at least for me, it's really important to have goals set, you know? If I don't really visualize those goals, it's not that I won't do them, it's just that it's harder for me to do them, okay? And so let me explain what a vision board is. It's basically a piece of cardboard or a, a cork board or whatever material you want to, like just having a frame, even in the wall, you know, you can do it in the wall. And the objective of a vision board is that you will put you, your goals um, on different areas of your life and you will express it in an artistic way 
So you, you know, it's nice to see, it's easy to read, and it's there for you to remind you that you have a certain goal that you want to achieve. So um, let's say, for example, you want to change certain parts of your life on getting a specific goal. For example, school or work, um, your personal life, let's say economically, and maybe health, okay? But you can think of anything you want for yourself. I mean, this is limitless. It's your goals and everyone has different goals. So you can choose whatever you want. Use your imagination, create, okay? Let's say, for example, I want to, I want to become healthier during this lockdown, okay? I have the possibility because, you know, I can actually think about what I'm doing. I am, my mind is focused on something that I will actually tell my mind to do. So it's a great time to start eating healthy, for example. So what would I do in my uh, vision board is, okay, healthy eating, okay? And I will put it on my health section of the vision board. What can I do with healthy eating? What, what comes to my mind um, with images or colors when I say healthy eating? Well, maybe um, a nice bowl of quinoa salad, for example, that I found in a magazine and I liked. Well, I'll cut it out and I'll paste it there on that section. Um, but also healthy eating might be, you know, um, cooking my, my, by myself. So I'll draw uh, my, myself as a little chef and I'll, I'll put it on my vision board. Um, maybe the color green tells me that it's something healthy. So I'll just put the color green there, you know. Express yourself in the way that you, you would like to express yourself. This is for you. Remember that e even though this is art, because it is art, um, it's your art. Art is very subject, subjective. You, you might like something that someone else made, but you also might not like it, you know, and that's perfectly normal. And this is for you and just for you. So um, the, the only thing here, it's really important, please keep your goals realistic. Um, I've known a lot of people who, of course, want more money. Who doesn't, right? Everyone wants more money. But if you put there, well, I am going to ask for a raise, but I want a $10,000 raise for next month. I'm sorry, but that's just not realistic. And you most likely, I mean, I'm not saying that you won't be able to get to that goal. Maybe some people will, but in majority, like us normal people, <laughs> we will not reach that goal. Okay? So be and realistic I'll ask you about what you Yes. With with the goals that we'd want to set, um, would would they not be restricted with um, depending on which level of the lockdown that we're in? Um, I'm just thinking if one is thinking of realistic goals, maybe they might end up limiting them to within their confined space. Or, or so can we still have that freedom to to dream maybe for next year or maybe the year after? When exactly. I can create a new normal for myself and by next year I push myself to achieve this when the lockdown restrictions have been removed. Yes, exactly, Miles. That's the other part that I wanted to talk about, about vision boards. We have different uh, timing in goals, right? The ones that I think are realistic to do now um, are the ones that you can actually manage after or during lockdown. So, for example, if I say, well, I, go, I, go, I went to work every day and I always thought, you know what, I should pay more attention to this subject. I should read more on this subject, but you never got around to do it. So now that you are on lockdown, you can actually put on your section of work, read more about, you know, whichever subject you were always thinking of, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to read more about this. Do after lockdown. Of course, we have many, many goals that we want for next year, for two years, for five years. 
in my experience, and this is only my experience, when people ask me, how do you see yourself in five or 10 years? I'm like, <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> you know why? Because <laughs> my life is hectic. I travel a lot, I move ab abroad a lot, and I cannot tell where I'm gonna be in the next five years. But there are certain goals that I can achieve, you know, that are maybe not five years from now. Um, and, and this is also important because if you put on your vision board so many goals that you want to achieve, at least for me, it, you know, when you're trying to create something pretty, something neat, that you actually understand, that you can see the segments that you've chosen, and then all of a sudden it's just pictures and colors and words and this and that, and you, you really can't even understand what you did, that's not much of a help, at least for me. I think the best way to go with a vision board is to, to put the goals that you want to achieve in a short period of time, okay? So that way, you can see them every day, you can work on it, and then once you have that goal done, you can put a new one, which makes you, you know, move forward in time. Of course, you, there are many people, me included actually, if you, if you tell me, well, would you like to buy a house, for example, in the next five to 10 years? Of course I would like to do that. Yes, so that is one of my goals. Um, and it's a, a long-term goal because I can't do it right now. But at some point, I might be able to. So that, you know, I can have the picture of a house that I really like and just leave it there without obstructing all of my other goals, okay? Because it's also important that you can focus on each goal that you have and not just, not just one, okay? Unless you really do want to have just one goal, go ahead and try for that one goal and then continue with another and then continue with another. But I think the most important thing is that you have clear goals that you can achieve soon. Otherwise, it's, it's difficult to carry on, you know, because it feels like you never reach it. Okay? That can be discouraging as well if you can't reach that of goal. Of course. Giving up and, you know. Of course. And the thing here, um, especially during lockdown, I don't know. I've been frustrated. I've been sad. I have so much uncertainty of what's going to happen. You know, a lot of feelings that I had maybe not even felt in many, many years. Like, I'm, I'm thinking all of a sudden, what, what am I feeling? Like, am I, am I sad? Am I mad? Am I bored? Like, what's going on? <laughs> I have no idea. Um, so creating something by yourself and, and, and putting goals for yourself that you're not going to reach anytime soon, especially during lockdown, it just makes it so much you know, see, and that you can reach during or after lockdown. And then when life goes back to normal, you know, <laughs> you can try for more. And maybe you can try for a time further away, okay? Okay, so one of the things that I think it's really important, and I really do um, invite you to try it out, with this connection between our environment, and most likely, at least for me, I will talk about um, the environment in my house, or in the house that I'm in right now, because I can't leave my house. Um, connecting inner and outer space, let's say, it's really important. So whenever you are doing something, I'm not only talking about a vision board, just whatever it is, let's call it art, okay? Um, if you want to paint, feel the flush, you know, feel the textures, see the colors, the smells, um, the, how, how it sounds. Look at the colors, feel how that, you know, that brush goes against a wall, a paper, a uh, rock if you want, whichever material you want to use. When coloring or drawing, 
feel how that pencil, feel how that coloring pencil slides against the, the paper. Feel and have a connection with that. It's sort of a meditation, you know, if you really think about it, because you're mindful to what you're doing and everything that has to do with it. It's a connection between the outer and the inner of yourself. And a lot of people might think, well, this is really dumb, you know, it's just a piece of paper and a pencil. But if you really do pay attention to it, you are creating. And you are creating with things that are so simple that we get for granted, you know? We never think, oh, you know, this pencil is gonna make me de-stress. Well, if you really, really think about it, it does. Just, just imagine a piece of paper, the whiteness of it, or whichever color you prefer to choose. The pencil just sliding, is it heavy, is it not heavy? Is the, the, the color of it, making a, a, a light color or a darker color, you know, get into it, okay? It's really important. And I, I promise you, if you really pay attention to what you're doing, you will feel a change. Instead of doing it for, you know, feeling like it was five minutes, you'll do it for half an hour because you're so into it, okay? It's expanding your mind. It's also letting you free of the place that you are, you are and you have been for such a long time. <laughs> okay. Any questions with that? Okay. Uh, thank, thank you so much. Um, I've been, we've been taking note of everything that you said, <laughs> and we really great um, to have you on the show today. Um, now, for me, I, I, it's, it's not really a question with regards to, to, to what you've said, but I'm just looking at the technological advances that are coming in. Um, do you see probably people going for therapy um, on, on, on using um, the current technological advances like Zoom, having Zoom meetings, um, groups, support groups on online and all of that. Do you see that happening more often um, after, after the, the COVID-19 crisis and also post the lockdown restrictions? Yes, definitely, definitely. Remember that um, this has brought a lot of issues um, to grow in a way that we haven't seen before. I mean, not that they Imagine all of those kids, for example, where their safety place was school or going to a relative's house or a friend's house because they were not safe in their own home. Um, imagine all of the women also that were not safe in their own home and they have no possibility of going somewhere else. Imagine all of the people who have lost so much money because they owned a, a company, for example or people who needed therapy, I mean, any sort of therapy, physical, psychological, any sort of therapy that have had to stop because they, they were not able to go to hospitals or meetings. Of course, this is going to, um, to make a, a huge difference. A lot of people are going to require psychological help. Um, I mean, a lot of people are, are requiring it now, but there are going to be masses of people that are going to require it after lockdown. And thanks to the technologies that we have today, it's going to be easier for them to do it. I mean, we don't know when this is going to end. Uh, there might be people who are still not, uh, you know, safe going to certain public areas or they will not feel comfortable having therapy face to face. So Zoom and Skype and WhatsApp are great, great um, technology tools that we will use. Mm -hmm. And th thank you so much uh, for that. And for me then, um, I have a last question, and then I'll give it to us. And which book uh, would you recommend? Um, probably that one can read post the lockdown and, or an app or a certain blog or a podcast that you're listening and, and, and that one can actually access um, maybe during the lockdown or post, the, or, or post lockdown? Okay, well, I've been reading a lot, but I haven't really, I can't really compare or feel comfortable saying, oh, you can read this after, uh, after lockdown. I haven't found a book yet that 
that you know I would I would recommend for that. And I think it really depends on each person. Like I like novels, for example, but maybe um, some other person likes biographies or um, memoirs. You know, different things that um, uh, I can not tell you about that because it's so different for everyone. But I think that one of the things that might make us smile um, after lockdown is reading something about traveling. Um, I'm not I'm not saying, okay, read about where you want to go in the world. I'm saying read about you leaving your house. If you have, you know, um, in Richards Bay, for example, you have the beach right there. Why don't you read about the beach? You know, why don't you read about the benefits that uh, brings you just walking barefoot and listening to the waves and listening to the birds and the breeze in your face. You know, that I think is something that people will really, really appreciate. Um, and if you do have the possibility of reading about some other place in the world that you've always wanted to go to and you have the possibility of going, and I would say read about travel. Um, we've been in London for a long time, I think. Um, you know, getting to, to know other places, even through books, is just amazing. Hey, Nos. Thank, thank, you, thank you for that. Uh, I, I want to ask a question to um, bring all the activities together. When you say um, you were talking about creating the vision board and um, creating activities and then being mindful of the activities that you're doing, even reading a book. That's when you are, you know, fully absorbed into the story that you're reading and the travel areas and destinations that you're reading about. But also, I want to ask for the people that are working from home. There are some people that are still able to work from home and need to balance their lives with family and being mindful. Mm -hmm. and What advice would you give them to balance things? Um, no. Hello? Okay, but you may continue answering. Um, okay, um, so I, 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 I assume that... Oh, okay, Nas, can you repeat the question? Oh, the question is for people who are working from home. So people to balance out uh, looking after this, raising kids at home, doing work, and still having creative activities like reading, like doing art, how they balance their time according to their schedule. Okay. Well, to me, I think the most important thing and one of the other activities that I wanted to mention is um, if you have the possibility of rearranging your furniture and your space and your, in your house and your apartment, that is a huge deal. Um, not only it'll create a different area, you know, but it will also bring you happiness if you actually like what you did. So with people who are working with home, from home and with kids, I think number one, you need to establish which one is your working area and which one is not. That is extremely important because you do need to focus, when you are working, you need to know that you're in a space that you are working. And you, your other uh, part of your house, of your apartment, is your, is your living space, okay? Um, there are a lot of funny videos uh, where people are on Zoom and they're having really important meetings and then kids just walk by or they start singing and they start running and, you know, even the dog is in the, in the picture yeah. and it's just out of control, okay? So I think number one, um, if you do have a working space, even, you know, even if it's just in your living room and it's this big, it's fine. Try to let your kids know and understand that you are working from home, that because no one is able to actually go to the office, then you have to work from home, but it's still working time. Just like they go to school and it's their school that time because it's really important for mommy or daddy to work 
Okay. Um, and then activities with kids. Wow, there are so many activities I've seen and a lot of activities that my friends who have kids have told me about. Just amazing. Um, you not only have any sort of art, um, you can also try, um, well, let me just focus here on, on a little bit, just a, a parenthesis. Art is also therapy, okay? So it's really important that you, you know that, okay? Um, any sort of art, any expression from the body, from the uh, mind, from your hands, from anything that you can create, um, you're using your imagination, but you're also focusing on something specific. Um, and it's, it's very, very therapeutical in many, many ways. Now, another thing that's also therapeutic that you can actually um, do with your kids is music. And not only listen to music, but also create music. You don't necessarily have to um, buy instruments or you don't, you don't need instruments. Create something, use your imagination. Okay? You're also expressing with your kids and it makes a connection. So you're making them think, you know, you're making them create something that is theirs. If you're great with your fingers and just tapping them on the table, well then be the best drummer ever, you know? Create something with your family, do, Can do it by themselves. I mean, nothing's going to happen when you know they're not playing with knives. <laughs> it's just creating something. Um, another thing that is really important, I think, and that kids really enjoy um, is spending time with pets. Now, let me be clear with this I am not saying go get a pet. No, uh, being a, a, a pet parent requires a lot of responsibility. You really have to think about it. Um, we don't want more abandoned. Um, or abused animals. That is not the point. Um, but if you do have a pet at home, it's also therapeutic, okay? And it's so nice for kids to actually play with the dog, play with the cat, play with the iguana, play with whatever you know you, you have. Um, it's, it, it, it's shown also that people who have pets are less likely to suffer from depression and, and anxiety. So, you know, just saying that, that scientifically proven, it means so much um, having a pet. If you don't have one, don't get one. Right now, it might not be the time for you to get one. But try to, you know, you, you who are in South Africa, and I, I enjoyed it so much while I stayed in, in Richard's Bay, watching the monkeys and the birds. And, you know, there were some, sometimes uh, some cats passing by. You know, I had so much fun, especially with monkeys. Um, they were, they're the best. I mean, um, I used to spend a lot of time alone while my boyfriend worked. And I was just amazed by them, you know. Instead of just spending five or ten minutes on my phone, I spent five or ten minutes watching them play. And I swear, I was just laughing and I was de-stressing and... It was great. Or listening to the chirping of the birds. It's something really nice that not as an adult uh, only you can do, but you can do with your children. Okay, so there are so many things that you can do. Just imagine, imagine and create. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for that. We shall definitely keep our eyes open. <laughs> yes. The opportunity. Yes, um, in, in closing, we're running out of time, as always. Uh, we only get two <laughs> at home. Um, any closing remarks, maybe touching on what could be our new normal um, after, after lockdown? Um, what can we expect as a society and as human beings, you know, social human beings going forward? Um, I think things are going to change. I don't know how. I don't think anyone knows how. But one thing that I am, I've been thinking about is with everything that's been going on, uh, what I would recommend is people to have compassion one for another. Um, things are going to change and we might not like it. And there's always going to be someone else who might not like it. You know, we're all going to adapt to the same thing and it's just, it's going to become a new rule. So have compassion for one another, have understanding for one another, have patience for one another, because we're all going to have to learn new things. 
and that takes time and it takes effort and it takes changing what everything we've lived with for all our lives to something completely new and that's not easy so true boy no, I've got nothing. I'm just, um, I'm, I'm just amazed. We had a great time uh, with Jimena. Um, hopefully, one day we'll come to Mexico. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely, definitely. Put it on your vision board. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got my passport. So as soon as the ban is lifted, we definitely try. Good. <laughs> yeah, and I love what you said about the pets. Just for me as well, I was thinking about my own therapeutical moments going through the lockdown that I, I really was craving a pet. Like I was really desiring, yeah. maybe I shouldn't say crave, I'd say I was desiring to have a pet, you know, to have a puppy nearby and watch him grow. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, they make life so much happier. <laughs> Yeah, I used to have kids, so I definitely want to get one again. Um, so thank you so much for today. Thank you for being available even throughout the entire um, session. And thank you for all the advice. I did see a lot of people writing down. Even Shout out to you, coach. I know we're going to have you at 5 p.m. I saw you writing down some notes there while drinking coffee. Um, so yeah, thank you for this session on mental health and mental wellness and um, hopefully see you in the next session, 5pm, we're having um, fitness wellness and nutrition. Excellent. Thank, thank you so, so much, much for the invitation.